Ok, ladies and gentlemen, so what I'd like to do is show you how to evaluate our six trigonometric functions uh, for uh, angles here. Uh, what we have is 5 pi over 4 and negative 7 pi over 4 using the unit circle. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to find these angles and determine where they intersect the unit circle and use the point where they intersect to evaluate for our six trigonometric functions, which will be sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So the basic, the first thing we need to do is we need to understand, well, first of all, where are these angles? And secondly, you know, what are the points that they intersect? excuse me, at the unit circle. So I have a nice little circle here, beautifully drawn. Um, so if I was going to, I'm going to draw like an x and a y axis here. Now remember, when we're creating angles, we always have our start, our start point right here on the positive portion of our x-axis. Then the next thing I'm going to do is when I'm creating my unit circle, I'm trying to determine where the angle is. I always look at the denominator of my angle. And when it's broken down into force, that's where I'm going to break up you know, each half of a circle into. Because remember, if here starts at 0, if I go halfway around a circle, that's going to be at pi. So that's the same thing as like a, you know, a full pi. So if I want to break up my pi into force, well, it's already broken up into halves by the x-axis. I can now break it up into 4, or by the y, um, x, y axis. Now I can break it up into force, and I can just continue that down here. Now, by using the unit circle, you could use your special right triangles or just look at an example of a unit circle here. Um, what we can see here is my example of my unit circle is going to be the square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. Um, then if I reflect it over the y-axis, you can just see that my x-coordinate is going to be negative. So square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. Now, the x and the y are both going to be negative in the third quadrant. So that's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, negative square root of 2 over 2. And then in the fourth quadrant, my x is still going to be positive, but my y will be negative. OK, so these are all four, these are all four points here um, when I broke them up into four. So we don't need to consider these because that's really your x and your y axis, right? So sometimes I even like delete these apart or take those out. Oops, actually, I need those. What am I talking about? And actually, I, you could say this point here, which would be um, 0, comma 1, right? And this would be negative 1, comma 0, 0, comma negative 1. There we go. 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, right? OK, so if we want to find our angle, again, we started our initial side. And again, just like I just counted out, here, it going in your positive direction would be pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, which is pi. But we need to get to 5 pi over 4, so I'm going to go one more. Therefore, the terminal angle, or the terminal side of our angle, is right here. And you can see it intercepts at this point, negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, negative square root of 2 over 2. Again, pull out a unit circle. You can see where that point comes from. Um, and I can, or in another one of my videos, you can see where I explain how to get that. So. Um, so that's where we have our point. Now we need to evaluate our six trigonometric functions. So the first function, you know, the first three, which we call like kind of our main ones, is sine of 5 pi over 4, cosine of 5 pi over 4, and tangent of 5 pi over 4. Now, when evaluating for a point on the unit circle, sine, cosine, and tangent are fairly simple. Uh, the sine is the value. To find the value of your sine of your angle, it's just going to be the y coordinate of the point where your angle intercepts the way, uh, where your angle intercepts the unit circle. So, if I have my x and my y here, uh, basically sine represents the y coordinate, which is going to be a negative square root of two over two. Cosine is going to represent the x-axis, which is going to be a negative square root of two over two. And tangent is going to represent y over x. Well, if you look at y and x are exactly the same. So I can write them out there, but I don't really, when I know I'm taking something, dividing it by its, exactly itself, I know it's just going to equal 1. And a negative divided by negative is going to be positive, so my final answer is just going to be positive 1. Now let's go and get into the reciprocal identities. <sighs> So the reciprocal identities, uh, first one we could deal with is cosecant of 5 pi over 4. Now I'm going to do one. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit long because I know that sine and cosine are going to be, uh, or the reciprocals of sine and cosine are exactly the same since the values of them are exactly the same. So cosecant is going to be the reciprocal of sine. So instead of uh, y, it's going to be 1 over y. So I'm going to have 
1 over negative square root of 2 over 2. So now what we need to do is when we have something like this, uh, we want to rational. We need to uh, multiply by the denominator. So I'll multiply by 2 over uh, square root of 2. I'll just leave that negative there. That's fine. Those cancel out, so I'm left with um, a negative 2 over the square root of 2. So I multiplied by my reciprocal of my denominator. Now I need to rationalize the denominator. And my final answer is going to be a negative 2 square root of 2 divided by 2. Well, you can see here that the 2's are going to divide out. So my final answer is a negative square root of 2. All right. Um, now, I spent a little bit of time, you know, hopefully on that. So you can see that whenever you have you know, a fraction in your denominator, you multiply by the reciprocal on the top and the bottom to get rid of the fraction in the denominator. When I did that, I was just left with the square root of 2 in the denominator. Well, when you have a square root of a number in your denominator, you have to rationalize the denominator to get rid of it. So I multiplied by the square root of 2 in the top and the bottom. And then that left me with negative square root of two divide, um, negative two times square root of two divided by two, where the twos could divide to one. So I'm just left with negative square root of two. Now, what's nice about this is if I go ahead and do secant of five pi over four, what you notice is the secant is one over x. Well, x and y are exactly the same. So instead of doing all this crazy math, I can just rewrite it and say, hey, I'm good, I'm done. And as well as the same thing goes for cotangent of 5 pi over 4. When you go ahead and look at cotangent, remember tangent was y over x. Well, cotangent is x over y. Well, these points are exactly the same. So y over x is going to be the exact same as x over y. So my answer is just going to be 1. Done. All right, so now let's go and move over to our next angle, which is going to be negative 7 pi over 4. So in the positive directions, remember we go counterclockwise, right? So negative, we're going to go in the clockwise direction. So this would be negative pi over 4, negative 2 pi over 4, negative 3 pi over 4, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi. So you can see that negative 7 pi over 4 here is going to leave us with the square root of 2 over 2, um, comma square root of 2 over 2, x and y coordinates. All right. Now again, we're going to do sine, cosine, and tangent, exactly the same. The one thing I want you to understand, though, is look at the points are exactly the same. The only difference is the negative values. So really, when I do sine, of 5 pi over 4, I'm going to say that um, you know, sine represents the y value. Well, the y value is the same for this one. It's just going to be square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 5 pi over 4 is going to equal the x value, which is square root of 2 over 2. The tangent of 5 pi over 4, again, we know that y and x are exactly the same, so that's going to equal 1. Um, when I go into cosecant, now I already went over the long way how to do this. So when I get to cosecant here, and I see again, oh shoot, this is going to be 1 over y. Well, it's going to be exactly the same, except now my y is positive. So instead of having negative square root of 2, I'm just going to have the square root of 2. When I get to secant, I understand that from the last problem, that secant and cosecant were exactly the same. So if I have square root of 2 for cosecant, I'm going to have the square root of 2 for secant. And then the last one, ladies and gentlemen, is cotangent, which um, is going to be the same thing as my tangent. And that's just going to be 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you evaluate for your six trigonometric functions um, using your unit circle for angles um, with a denominator of 4. Thanks. There